trust her enough. Take the phone, bro. She still sent the low. Yo, what up, YouTube? Yo, yo, what up, YouTube? Tayo back with another video, aka Mr. Honesty. Vultures versus Bleeders, the Daily War of Bay and Root. I know what y'all thinking. It's my first real time doing something like this in a minute, like a year, I think. And I was thinking they didn't fuck with this video until like a year later and they started just picking up views. And I don't know why. It's like, you know, since I look back at my video, I'm like, that shit, the thumbnail was whack. My editing was probably worse. You know, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I'm going to try to do more of these and hopefully get like, oh, at least 100 views or more. It, even if it don't be in one day, as long as it just over time do that, I, I'd rather that have a good thumbnail with the best editing I could do for right now and stuff like that. But we're going to get straight into the 20 minute video of Voices vs. Bleeders, the Daily War in Beirut. All I can say is, young boy might have something to do with this, but not like nothing to do with this, if you know what I mean. Like he's part of this because of Baton Rouge and his people, but he not exact part of this story. Or he most likely not going to be. Are we going to see? Rap fans were shocked when True Bleeder was killed in 2022. He was one of the hottest rappers in Baton Rouge and about to hit the mainstream. But behind the scenes, there was a deadly gang war that still hasn't slowed down. The vultures and the bleeders have been dropping bodies on both sides. And today we're breaking down the whole story oh. and diving into how NBA young boys involved in this brutal beat. See what I said? But I doubt he's gonna really the be involved. The vultures and bleeders though. have been tearing up the streets of Baton Rouge, Louisiana for years. But the violence didn't start with them. For 34 straight years between 1989 and 2022, Louisiana's had the highest murder rate in the country. And in Baton Rouge, it's even worse than the rest of the state. The murder rate in Baton Rouge is over four times higher than the national average. But homicide isn't the only thing getting people killed. The north side of Baton Rouge is connected to an area called Cancer Alley or Death Alley. Cancer Alley is an 85 mile long piece of land between Baton Rouge and New Orleans that's completely covered with chemical plants and refineries. Hell Back no. in the 50s, the people in power started building the plants around the black communities and just dumped all the toxic waste on them. The air, water, and land in the area is basically deadly. And when some coast guard. So, why I have never started nothing like this? This is the stuff I'm talking about. Like, RP to all our lives, but it's like, we got so many people dying. They showing us people from other places and stuff like that. When we got stuff like this going on that I've never heard about in my life. You feel me? I don't know about y'all, but I've never heard that they had some type of waste thing. And I and I bet probably half of them didn't know that either until they got it. And that shit fucked up. Guard divers went into the water to test the soil. They came out with second degree burns all over them. Over 25% of the what did he say? Test the soil land in the area is basically deadly. And when some Coast Guard divers went into the water to test the soil, they I knew I wasn't tripping right because he he said, "Bro, I'm lost already, bro." They he ain't be getting to it yet. He just said they got burned, but they were in the water. I've never heard of that, like, bro. They came out with second degree burns all over them. Over 25% of the chemicals from petroleum comes from Cancer Alley, and the people who run the plants are billionaires. Baton Rouge doesn't get that money though, billionaires. so the people who live there are kept poor while being poisoned too. Baton Rouge's poverty rate is over twice the national average, and there aren't a lot of Look what they're doing to our people, bro. Like, what the fuck, bro? What is this, bro? Like, what are y'all doing to our people? Out of the city. Places like Chicago and New York are wild, but at least there's something to do. Right. Baton Rouge doesn't have much going Nothing. on, and that's why so many dudes get active in the streets. The city has always been violent, but the gang situation right now is worse than it's ever been. And what makes the beef between the bleeders and the vultures so shocking is that all of them are homies back in the day. It's not clear what really started everything, but in 2014, the beef kicked off with the brutal triple murder at Fredo Banks' birthday party. Fredo Banks Fredo performed Banks at the Baker Civic party? Club in March 2014. I never heard of that. And bro, off, off scene, man, off this reaction shit, I just hope that y'all fuck with this shit so I can do more of these. All this reaction shit, I've been watching these shits all the time. Whenever it be some new shit, especially Trap Little Rock, bro. I'm telling you, if y'all fuck with this, bro, I even do like Trap Little Rock type. You feel me? Like, I just don't want to do it. It's only going to have like a few views, like five, ten. If it have over 80 views, bro, I'm taking that win, bro. A lot of people, nah, I'm taking that win. You feel me? I'm 14, never... when a dude named Scrappy came in and started letting off shots with a revolver. According to a reports, revolver, he, he was aiming at a dude named Javon Simmons first. But after he hit Simmons, Scrappy kept shooting and ended up killing Fredo's homie, Crazy Trey, True Bleeder's older brother, Kimon, and a girl named Marcel Ideal. Scrappy and Javon Simmons allegedly had some kind of fight outside of the Civic Center first. Then Scrappy got his gun and went inside to kill Javon. That wasn't where it started though. 
According to reports, Scrappy repped a crew called Acres Fam from an area south of Glen Oaks called Holiday Acres. Glen Oaks is where Troop Lita and his family are from, and it's also where Fredo Banks' homie G Money came from. Before the shooting at Fredo's birthday party, Scrappy and his homies were allegedly sliding into Glen Oaks territory, and one time his homie Michi got hit in the head with the board. Scrappy pleaded guilty to three counts of manslaughter and one attempted murder charge after he was arrested. The judge handed down a 40-year sentence, and in the courtroom, Scrappy said, Everything happened so fast. I took three lives when I didn't mean to. I'm sorry. A couple of witnesses came forward and told the cops what went down that night at the Civic Center, and that's how Scrappy ended up getting booked. Like even though that's he was locked. Even though that's a little bit, that's still gonna take a long ass time. What's up? Scrappy went live on IG and claimed that Fredo Banks snitched on him. Fred, you give me on my paperwork right here. That's his name right there. You see it right there. Now, if you see it right here, when it says, "Given the answer to communicate with the police." And this is his number, 225 955 0916. They got the same number. And it says, message has. <laughs> that, nigga said, that, nigga, that nigga said, damn, we got the same number? With the police. And this is his number, 225 955 0916. They got the same number. And it says, message has been stamped. I mean, he screenshot my picture. And you know, he just wanted but to say it. Out, the story funny, was all cap. Fredo he wasn't even trying to keep funny. Life. Then while he was locked up, Scrappy oh, started running for Fredo's ops in a set called BBG or Bottom Boy Gorillas. But before we dive into the brutal murders that are still happening right now, we gotta take a look at how Baton Rouge got split in half by two of the happened. biggest rappers in the city's history. Lil Boosie is a legend in the Southern rap game. And before Don't tell NBA, me it's like a Boosie versus Young Boy because I did not know Boosie was on the other side. Like I kind of heard of the Fortune versus Bleeders thing. It's not the first video I've seen on them, but I'm still kind of like unfamiliar. Be like, first of all, I watch so many of like different type of areas and shit. You know, just to see what's going on and shit. Like you just want to be like, what is the word? Um, curious. You just want to be curious on what these niggas be doing, bro. Like what? How niggas really want to move? How niggas really want to think? You feel me? If niggas know. If niggas know. You feel me? Be a Young Boy blew up. Boosie was the biggest rapper Baton Rouge ever had. He's also cousins with Fredo Bang, but there's a bloody story behind why they- One thing I heard was hip hop daily, don't be like always right. But if this is real and people knew this, I'm telling you, I didn't know all this, bro. My for Baton Rouge ever had. He's also cousins with Fredo Bang, but there's a bloody story behind why they- Back in 2005, Boosie's best friend was another rapper named Lil Ivy. Boosie started popping off in the industry while Lil Ivy still had both feet in the trenches though. And Ivy started a crew on the north side of Baton Rouge called TBG or Top Boy Gorillas. Ivy ended up hopping in the booth too, but rumors said that Boosie was trying to stop his shine. Boosie had just signed a major deal with Warner Brothers Records and had a lot of clout he could have used to give Ivy a boost in the industry. Rumors said that another rapper was trying to sign Lil Ivy and Ivy wanted Boosie's help getting the deal, but Boosie wouldn't make the call. It seemed like everything was still cool with Boosie and Ivy though. On April 2nd, 2005, they were supposed to meet up at a club and kick it together. But Boosie ended up leaving early because a fight broke out and he wasn't trying to get caught up in any drama. Ivy and some other homies stayed at the club for a while. They left a few hours later, but none of them made it home alive. When Ivy and his homies pulled out of the club parking lot, some shooters rolled up and killed all three of them. Nobody was ever booked for the triple murder. But rumors started flying that Boosie was involved with the hit. Lil Ivy's wife was pregnant with their son when he died. So Boosie stepped up and said he would adopt Ivy's son and make sure he was taken care of. It seemed so why like would they nice think that? But that Wait, why would they think that he killed him? But he is about to say something happened, but it's like, what could happen? Like, you know it should be more shocking than like movies and shit when you really what happened to life. Then it's like, now I see why these crazy, why we get these crazy things in movies because they got the idea inspired from real life. Like, real life really do some crazy shit. So that he would adopt Ivy's son and make sure he was taken care of. It seemed like a really nice move, but that didn't stop the rumors from spreading. Some people think that the label issue was way deeper than anyone thought, but nobody really knows what happened. Boosie is always denied being involved with Ivy's the son? Death, but Ivy's family still turned against him. One of Ivy's nephews is a dude named Lin Yoshi. Yoshi reps TBG oh, and got noticed for going to war with NBA Youngboy's crew. But before that situation popped off, he was beefing with Lil Boosie and his nephew, Boosie Boy B. Boosie Boy B claimed that Boosie had a 100k bag on Lil Yoshi's head. And that's not the first time Boosie allegedly put a hit out on someone. Back in 2009, Boosie was beefing with a dude named Nusi. Nusi got shot in the head by one of Boosie's homies. And rumors said that it happened because Boosie put 30k on him. Nobody ever collected the bag that Boosie allegedly put on Yoshi's head. 
but he's not the only rap star who has beef with TBG. NBA Youngboy used to be best friends with the younger brother of a TBG rapper named G Money. G Money took Youngboy under his wing and helped get his rap career going. But then, the situation turned deadly. After Youngboy got his name popping in Baton Rouge, he split off from TBG and started his own crew, NBA. At first, fans thought it was because he wasn't getting enough shine in TBG, but the real story is way more shocking. When Youngboy left TBG, nobody knew there was drama at first. It seemed like they were all still cool with each other, but it didn't take long for that to change. The first sign Youngboy had beef with his old homies was when he linked up with his cousin Boozilla. Boozilla read BBG and had beef with Youngboy back in the day, but after Youngboy left TBG and started NBA, they started rocking with each other. Then Youngboy aired out the whole TBG situation on record. It turns out that G Money had hooked up with Youngboy's sister, so Youngboy dropped the track Pour One and rapped. Remember smoking weed with your little brother? Matter of fact, nigga, I used to call you my big brother. Then you did some foul shit and had sex with my sister, then threw it in my face in front of people on Insta. Youngboy and G Money probably could have still squashed everything and moved on, but then one murder changed it all. Godzilla was trying to get his rap career popping like his cousin NBA Youngboy, but then he was allegedly shot and killed by a TBG affiliate named Dusa. That's when Youngboy and his homies started sliding into op territory to clap back. According to police reports, Youngboy rolled in with a gun. Even though niggas ain't gonna care, you feel me? But if you do, this is how I first ever, you know, met a young boy, you know, even heard. When he did this thing, you feel me? Not saying it was a good thing, but I feel like if he would never even shot at this nigga, I wouldn't even have heard a young boy until like everybody heard a young boy. I heard a young boy during this time. So let's say he did it November 1. It probably didn't start getting like around town. People probably didn't start talking about it to like, let's say late November, start of December. Of, but you see it though, 2016. It's 2024. That means I've been listening to him for eight years. they has been listening to him for what? Two, three, four years. Because you know, it's the, it's the hype now. It's the way. Talk about when this nigga wasn't like no type of wave, nothing, just another rapper trying to make it. Like I really heard this nigga music and I feel like he's one of the reasons why I listen to music the way I listen to music now. Like I was honestly about to give up on music before I heard of his music and not even on no dick riding shit. I was listening to stuff like Lil Uzi and stuff like that. And Lil Uzi, he was cool and all back in 2016, but I was also around the time he started saying he was saying this. But that's not the reason why I cut Uzi off though. I was about to dog and I said, no, I ain't fuck with that saying shit. But if the music good and ain't about no good shit that I'm gonna fuck with it. But the reason why is because right after he started saying that saying and shit, his music started getting a little different. You feel me? I didn't think his music was gonna change. I didn't really like the music the only way it was, but I like young boy music. I went that direction, you feel me? Done and started pressing people like about Mozilla's death. Young boy and his crew let off shots at a couple dudes that day and missed, but the ops busted back and shot NBA Joe in the neck. Oh, NBA young yeah, boy got booked for attempted murder. But Damn, his lawyers were able to get a plea deal with just a 10 year suspended that. sentence. And when Youngboy came back home, his beef with G Money and the rest of TBG really started making headlines. G Money took shots at Youngboy on the track industry and rapped, had me looking for your cousin, he wanted to kill you. I put a 30 up under my pistol. Your sister swallowed nut, so I never kissed her. But I fuck with her, so I never dissed her. Then on another track, G Money said, got love for him, fucked his sister, I can't get him killed. Even though you went to tripping when you got a deal, you was my son. Let's keep it G. Just because you know how to rap, don't make me no killer. Sneak this in TBG on rights, but you soft as a pillow. Then in 2017, G Money was shot and killed while he was leaving the studio, and Youngboy's mm -hmm. homie NBA Pap went down for the murder. TBG allegedly clapped back and killed Youngboy's manager, Dunk. So mm -hmm. Youngboy dropped the track AMR and said he was gonna take them all out when he raps. Wish you forever, never gonna leave you hanging. They want some fame, so you know that we gonna leave them all famous. NBA, these niggas know that we dangerous. Yeah, they I know, know that's hurt, but I won't shed a tear. I show them I'm painless. Wait, I thought this shit wasn't released. Wait, is this song released? Yeah, I got this song in my playlist. To your little cousins and your wife, I know they all down. And every day, all through the night, yeah, we gonna ride down. Until they gone, promise I won't make not one sound. NBA Pat pleaded guilty over the G Money situation, but still claims he wasn't the shooter. It's not clear who really pulled the trigger on him, but during the investigation, that nigga got five years. Even though he didn't do it, he's like got five years. He didn't know about nobody else that did it. And after that five years, like you know that five years is gonna take long. After that five years, people ain't like that shit ain't never happened. It's like damn, that nigga's really technically got away with murder. The police found out that Pap had been shot by Lil Yoshi before G Money was killed. Yeah. The war between TBG and NBA claimed a lot of lives on both sides, but it also sparked a whole new wave of violence in Baton Rouge with other groups. 
Back in the day, most of the gangs in the area didn't have issues with each other. True Bleeder used to rock with young boys affiliates like Who Gang D, and True Bleeder's brother, Cole Bleeder, told Say Cheese TV. Did Tim like my best friend, really? Damn word. That my best friend. Like growing up type shit? My real best friend, my right hand left. The Bleeders are also tight with a crew called Jungle Music, and a rapper named Jungle Music Larry was really close to Young Boy's homie, OG33. But after Young Boy split off from TBG, it made everyone in the city pick a side, and the violence went to a whole new level back in 2021. After True Bleeder lost his brother Kimon in 2014, everything changed for him. True Bleeder and his homie started a crew called Moanway in honor of his dead brother. And back then, True Wait, Moanway? Bleeder and his homie started a crew called Moanway in honor of his dead brother. And back Said then, True Bleeder was going by the name Moanway D. His older brother, Cole Bleeder, and his cousin, True Bleeder, was what? going by the name Moanway D. His older brother, Cole Bleeder, and his cousin, Real Bleeder, were part of the group too. And later, Real Bleeder came up with the Bleeder name. Everyone involved with the situation has a crazy story, but Real Bleeder's come up was the most tragic of all. His dad was in the streets and didn't really stick around much. So Real Bleeder was being raised by a single mother. Then, when he was four years old, his mom and aunt were both tragically killed by an 18-wheeler. 18-wheeler? Honey, my auntie died together. Real Bleeder was raised by his grandma after that and was always getting into trouble. When he was a teenager, Real Bleeder got expelled from school because the girl was making fun of his mom's death, so he put hands on her. And that's when he had to move out from school because it was always getting What, bro? Why would she do that? And why trouble. would he, when he not teenager, put his hands on her? Real Bleeder got expelled from school because the girl was making fun of his mom's death, so he put hands on her. And that's when he had to move to Texas for a while that's to right. his dad. It's not that's clear why it didn't work right. out. But eventually, Real Bleeder had to go back to Baton Rouge instead of living with his dad. But when he turned Damn. 18, he got a big insurance that payout because of his that. mom's death. Oh. Real Bleeder got 130k, but unfortunately, it didn't last long. He could have used the money to make it out of the streets and set himself up for the future. But he had no idea how to handle all the cash and ended up blowing it all in less than a year. After he ran through all the money, Real Bleeder was right back at the bottom. No way he did that, bro. Not for the people, bro. Not for his bro. No. Blowing it all in less than a year. After he ran through all the money, Real Bleeder was right back at the bottom. True Bleeder and Real Bleeder had already lost a lot of people to the streets at a young age. So Real Bleeder came up with the Bleeder name. True Bleeder is the one who really pushed the wave, though. He changed his rap name from Moan Way D to True Bleeder and started putting in work in the booth. The Bleeders started clicking up with different sets around Glen Oaks like Jungle Music. They're also tied with dudes from Zion City like TG Commons. True Bleeder and G Money are from the same Comics. hood, so the Bleeders are tied with TBG too. True Bleeder and his homies put the Bleeders on the map in the rap game, but they had issues in the streets way before rap fans started hearing about them. And their main ops are a crew called the Vultures. The Vultures are from an the area in South Baton Rouge called Scotland Scotlandville. Scotlandville is a pretty big place, and the Vultures rep a hood on the south side called Bankstown. They have a lot of alleged shooters in the crew, but their biggest rappers are YKWIHF Faya and his cousin YKWIHF Ka. YKWIHF stands for You Know What It's Hidden For. And what's crazy about their beef with the Bleeders is that Vea and Ka both used to be tight with True Bleeders' brother Kimon and Jungle Music. Bankstown has a lot of ties to NBA Youngboy's crew. His homie Ben 10 has a lot of family on that side of the city. Youngboy and everyone on his side are also tied with a crew from the Sherwood Forest neighborhood of Baton Rouge called Six the Crew, aka Goblin Gang. These niggas, bro, this is this is another reason why we watching this shit. Because you want to understand, especially for a lot of people, like this is why I be telling these white people to shut the fuck up when they be talking about shit like this. Like, oh, oh, black lives don't matter because they be killing each other, bro. If you really see what's going on and you really see how this shit really work together, it really makes more sense. These niggas not just clicking up just to save each other's lives. These niggas clicking up because they got family members, blood ties. Like, it just showed that Ben 10 had cousins with a lot of them niggas on that side. That young boy, brother, like literally his brother, we just found out that was his brother shit. Hopefully that, that's his real brother, but you feel me? They be saying that's his real brother. So it's like- with the Bleeders is that Vey and Ka both used to be tight with True Bleeders, also tight with a crew from the Sherwood Forest neighborhood of Baton Rouge called Six the Crew, AKA Goblin Gang. Young boy's little brother, B-Way Youngie is their main rapper and they're all clicked up with the NBA movement. B-Way has his own beef with the Bleeders that goes all the way back to 2019. B-Way and another one of his brothers were both booked for killing a dude named Javon Brown. 
Javon was walking home from school when b and his brother allegedly popped out and killed Javon because he was affiliated with the set that's clicked up with the bleeders called 300. The beef between all the different crews in Baton Rouge is complicated and there's a lot of different rumors about what really started it all. Some people think it all started popping off a couple years ago, but others claim it's all connected back to Lil Boosie's era. We don't know exactly what sparked the war in Baton Rouge, but in 2021, it reached a crazy level of violence that nobody expected. On April 23rd, 2021, a Vulture affiliate named Zip was shot and killed right after his 29th birthday party. Nobody was ever booked for the murder, but rumors say the bleeders were behind the hit and they even did Zip and Youngboy's manager dump too. Then a few months later, the Vultures took another loss after a dude named Jima was shot outside of his crib during a drive-by. What makes the situation really tragic is that Jima wasn't really in the streets. He was an army veteran who did a lot of community projects in Baton Rouge, including a nonprofit he started called Rebirth. Jima wanted to help kids in the community stay out of the streets and find a better path. But tragically, he was killed in the trenches at just 25 years old. Jima wasn't gangbanging at all, but his younger brothers were YKW IHF Vea and another Vulture affiliate named Duba. And the police think that Jimo wasn't the one who the shooters really wanted. But just a few weeks after Jimo was shot, the Vultures got hit again. YKW IHF Kai was in a hotel parking lot with a woman when a shooter rolled up and killed him on the spot. Kai had been making music for years, but never really You know what's so hit. crazy, bro? I was, I was looking at him, not even doing no this for that. I was like, bro, I ain't gonna lie, bro. I don't know. That's all I'm gonna say. I don't know. You feel me? Again. YKW IHF Kai was in a hotel parking lot with a woman when a shooter rolled up and killed him on the spot. Kai had been making music for years, but never really popped off in the industry. He has a buzz in the city, but his career got held up back in 2020 after he caught a murder case. According to reports, Kai was hooking up with a woman when her ex-boyfriend Brandon Chapman came into the crib and started some drama. It's not clear exactly how it went down, but Kai ended up killing Chapman and was hit with a second degree murder charge. He ended up beating the case because the grand jury decided it was self-defense. But then, just a year later, Kyle was brutally killed in the hotel parking lot. Witnesses told police that it sounded like Kyle got hit up with a machine gun. And rumors have been flying that the bleeders were behind the shooting after Cole Bleeder dropped the track blow for blow and rapped. Stupid tender dick ass niggas ain't got no brain, that nigga silly. I hit up KJ and Lil Dude. Them niggas pulled up, let off 60. KJ reps a crew that's clicked up with the bleeders called 60 Gang. And in 2022, he allegedly killed a dude named Taron Fob and has been locked up since 2023. It's not clear what the situation was over, but reports say KJ spotted Fob on the street and killed him right there. Nobody knows if KJ was involved with Kyle's death, but this is how it all went down according to sources who claim they have more info. Mm -hmm. They say Kyle was allegedly set up by the woman he took to the hotel. And when they went to the parking lot to leave, all of Kyle's tires were flat. Costo got in the whip, but didn't notice that three shooters were said, he said all his was allegedly set up by the woman he took to the hotel. And when they went to the parking lot to leave, all of Cost's tires were flat. Cost all of his tires was flat. Oh my God. Oh my God. Bro, he didn't trust her enough to take her to the crib so he knew it could have been something like that. And she still sent the low, bro. Take the phone, bro. Take the phone, bro. She still sent the low. Still got in the whip, but didn't notice that three shooters were walking down on him before it was too late. Rumors said that somebody put a bag on Kai's head. It's KJ, a bleeder named Coco, oh, and another shooter, and a collect. Less than a week bro, later, bro. the vultures allegedly clapped back and left another body dead in the streets. Yeah. On October 28, 2021, that, a rapper named Mugatti was murdered at 10 in the morning on the east side of Baton Rouge. Mugatti repped the sack on SMG, who's clicked up with the bleeders too. It didn't take long for him to respond though. A couple months later, young boy's homie Ben Tan and his cousin Marvin Batiste got caught on the highway by some shooters. Ben Tan got hit up and survived, but his cousin, unfortunately, didn't make it out of the situation a lot. Ben Tan a lot of people think the bleeders are the ones who try to kill Ben Tan, and the rapper named 40 Glock CU basically confirmed it on the track Gator Pack when he rapped, a nigga died as soon as we hit they curb soon as I aim and pull it. You can't play me like no pussy. That's some shit I never been. Heard a nigga stepped on shh, but they was trying to step on Ben. After his cousin was killed, Ben 10 started going back and forth with the bleeders and got into an argument with True Bleeder on Clubhouse. The bleeders kept up the pressure on the vultures and the rest of the ops. But then in 2022, they took a massive loss that shocked the entire city. While all the violence was tearing Baton Rouge apart, True Bleeder was popping off in the industry with tracks like Play For Keeps and Check My Jacket. 
He was building up a big fan base and had a lot of people outside the city supporting him. But unfortunately, the drama in the streets caught up to him before he could really make it out. On February 25th, 2022, True Bleeder, his brother Cole Bleeder, and two of their homies were all shopping at the Mall of Louisiana. It's one of the biggest malls in America, so nobody expected what happened there in the middle of the day. They were chilling at the mall too long, according to Cole Bleeder, and that's when somebody found out where they were at and ambushed them outside. While they were walking to the car, some shooters pulled up and started letting off shots in broad daylight. True Bleeder allegedly hopped out of the whip and busted back, but his homie Cliff and him were both killed on the scene while the ops jumped in the getaway car and drove off. The ops started dissing True Bleeder immediately, and his homie 54 John Dada went live on IG crying about the situation. Then a dude from Bankstown named Herm hopped on the track Soul Snatcher and rap. Gotta drop up on them boys, knock them down like dominoes. Up that flicky, hit that switch, that's another casket close. Hollow going through his body, hit him everywhere except his toes. His little partner on that grand with all that crying and shit. Get a napkin, wipe the tear, go sling some iron, little bitch. A few months after True Bleeder was killed, the cops booked Dubuck from the Vultures for his murder. Dubuck is the brother of Gmo, who was allegedly killed by the Bleeders, and he's also related to YKWIHF cop. Dubuck had a lot of reasons to go after the Bleeders, and the cops allegedly found his DNA in the whip that the shooters used. It looked like Dubuck would definitely go down for the murder, but then news broke that the grand jury decided not to charge him because they didn't have enough evidence. A statement came out that said Dubuck was going to be held in jail while the case was worked on, but then two other dudes got booked for killing True Bleeder instead. In April 2023, cops in Texas arrested Donald Ray Graves, an vulture affiliate and YKWIHF dude for the murder of True Bleeder and allegedly helping to smuggle illegal immigrants. According to reports, Graves is the one who bought one of the whips used during the shooting. It's not clear where the True Bleeder case is at right now. But Dubuck ended up getting released and started going by the name Grim Reaper on Instagram. He might still be facing charges, but Dubuck's back home for now. Before True Bleeder died, he was linking up with a rapper from Zion City named TG Commas all the time. They had a ton of tracks together and shared ops in the street. But now Commas is trying to move on from the beat. TG Commas squashed everything with Youngboy, and Youngboy shouted him out on an unreleased track and rapped. I just talked to Commas. Fuck what's going on, I got you. It seemed like Cole Bleeder just wanted to focus on the music too and get away from all the violence. But then in January 2024, he got caught up in a wild shooting with his homies Peso, 54 Don Dada, and some other bleeders. Nobody really knows what went down or who was a shooter, but a wild video came out showing a bunch of people laying on the ground with gunshot wounds after somebody rolled through and started letting off shots. It's not clear who, if anyone, died from the shooting, but luckily Cole Bleeder made it out alive and posted Aww. about his recovery on Instagram. The war between the Bleeders and Vultures have been going on for years, and at this point, it doesn't look like it's going to stop anytime soon. Youngboy tried to step in with his Stop the Violence campaign and squash some of his old beef. Stop the violence. Hey, look at me. I can promise you it's a bigger side of life. Stop the violence. But by this point, everyone in the city has lost so many people on each side, and it's probably too late for even a superstar like NBA Youngboy to have an impact on all the violence. They don't even down respect Youngboy in Louisiana, bro. That was a W video. I ain't gonna lie, bro. It was a little long. Rap fans were shocked. Hell no, that shit was about down. Hell no. I'm gonna try to end this video off. It was a W video. Cousin, he with that hot shit. I run his pocket. She know I'm toxic. I got the kids all hot like a locket. I put that cheese on his head and he knocked me. Ain't no bucks. Ain't doing no bucks.